So let's do a GM, let's do a GM bypass system first. And what we have is a crankshaft position sensor signal that goes to an ignition control module. The ignition control module sends a signal to the PCM or ECM and the PCM sends a signal back to the ignition module. The module controls the coil at all points in time. So this is really the extent of the detail that I'm going to get with these components. In this example that I'm giving you, this crank sensor signal makes an AC sine wave. It gets converted by the ignition control module into a digital square wave. That should sound familiar to you already. We've been talking about this one. Some names, I don't think they're important, but I can give them to you. This would be your reference wire, this one right here. Reference. And this one is called an EST wire, which is, stands for electronic spark timing. So what we have is on this design, during cranking, the crankshaft position sensor signal comes into the ICM, it gets converted to digital, and is really directly controlling the coil. Firing the base circuit of the transistor that's in the in the module. At the same time that that is occurring, we are also sending that signal to the, to the PCM. The PCM needs to know that for RPM, piston position, fire the injectors, that, that is our RPM input. As soon as the computer sees 200 RPM on, on this reference wire, 200 RPM or 5 to 15 seconds of cranking if you read about this system, it actually sends a a 5 volt turn on signal to this ICM which internally in here it switches and what it does is it interrupts that direct path to the coil so this signal still going there but now the computer controls the coil like this that's the the basics of a bypass ignition system so what controls the spark during cranking on a bypass system, the module, on this design, the module controls spark during cranking. Why is that important? If this car comes in and it is a no spark, are we even looking at the computer as the cause? We are not. And that is the reason we're going over this right now. Is that a huge time-saving piece of information? It sure is. And then that also answers some questions on that video that we did with our computer that burned up and why we had spark on that engine. Okay? On this system, the computer is not involved at all during cranking. We could add one more note here and say that the computer or PCM controls spark during running. But it does it through the module. It's still the module that has the main power transistor that controls the coils. It's just the computer that's signaling the module with it running. There's another way that you could say this. You could say the crank sensor signal is directly signaling the module during cranking and with it running the computer is signaling the module with it running. And so that it does it on this EST wire and I think I, I missed that. This Once the computer sends that 5 volt bypass it switches internally and I did say that. But did I draw it on this line though? Did I draw it like that? Yes I did. The computer is controlling the coil so what you would have is you'd have a reference pulse coming in up here. We'd have this pulse coming in this way and the computer is sending out a variable on off electronic spark timing signal on the EST wire. That's, that is your bypass system. When you set timing on these systems and they use these forever this would go all the way back to the first distributor design 
where the we got rid of the vacuum and centrifugal advance mechanisms and we made this electronic spark timing right this is way back in the 80s when we set timing on this engine what we did is we unplugged on a lot of them we unplugged a wire that was on the bypass circuit and that would force the module into what was known as module mode and then you set your timing because in module mode isn't the crank sensor signal directly doing the work so can we now set our base time computers out of the out of the picture that's what you did bypass system what's the point point is what do we need to check what do we not need to check what are our variables if this engine here the PCM 5 volt reference circuit shorts out. That takes the PCM out of the picture, doesn't it? Will we still have spark on this engine? Yeah. We will. What we'll have is no communication. We'll have no check engine light. We'll have no injection pulse. The car doesn't start, but we still have spark. Don't let it throw you off. Okay? Let me show you a non... Well, let's do Ford next. Let's, let's, do, a, let's do a Ford system. Here's a Ford system. You're going to see this looks almost identical. Got a crank signal, goes to the ignition control module, ignition control module sends a signal to the PCM, PCM sends a signal to the ICM, ICM controls the coil. So what's the difference? Well, Ford used digital signals, most of them. This was already a digital signal, so that would be different. And this wire, it wasn't called a reference wire, it was called a PIP signal. And a PIP signal on a Ford, that stood for Profile Ignition Pickup. That is your RPM signal to the computer. Just like the reference wire up here, right? This reference wire, this would be my computer RPM input. On this circuit, this is my RPM input. So piston position RPM, that is our main input. The computer would control the spark on the spout circuit, and spout stood for spark output. Essentially what we're dealing with is very, very similar design as, as the GM is, that the module really did not need the engine computer for spark on this and I think there were some subtle differences uh, we don't need to go into the the main detail with this but I am fairly confident that you can unplug the computer on a Ford with this design and still have spark and I could be wrong about that but it, this is what what Ford did let's do Toyota pitch that for again? what's that yeah. PIP stood for Profile Ignition Pickup. Here, I'll write it down. Uh, profile Ignition Pickup. And that was our PIP. And our spout stood for Spark Output. And it was similar in that you had a signal coming in this way, a, a signal that was based solely on distributor position and you had an altered signal coming out this way that would change the timing. So we had, you see the arrow, direction of flow. Okay, let's do uh, Toyota. I don't need to do it like this. I should say Asian cars, because this would be Toyota, Subaru, Nissan, Honda. Uh, you know what, I I'm not even going to name all those cars. I'm just gonna say, we'll just, We'll just do the whole Asian market. Asian cars. Uh, you know what? How about Asian and and Euro cars? Pretty much, they were all done like this. They didn't use bypass systems. Not that I've ever seen. Okay. And this is this is really going to shed some light on how you can determine what system you have. Crankshaft signal goes to the PCM. This is your this is your number one clue on what kind of system you have. PCM controls a device called an igniter, which is nothing more than a module, and the igniter controls the coil. What is the difference here? What's in control of spark all the time? Computer. And how do you know that? 
because that crankshaft position sensor signal goes directly to the computer. So you want to know if you have a bypass system or not? Look at your wiring diagram, see where the crankshaft signal goes. On this design, if we lose the PCM, we lose spark. On this design, if we lose the 5 volt reference circuit from a short, we lose spark too. So no communication, no spark, no injection, injection pulse. So it's a little bit different. This is my favorite one coming up. You'll, you'll see why in a second. This is Chrysler. Chrysler G. And I'm not partial to Chrysler vehicles. I am partial to Chrysler electronics. Here's why. Where's the igniter? Where's the module? It's inside the computer. Now, why would I like this one? Why has this one been my favorite throughout the years? Oh, let me back up here for a second. I'm not talking about coil over plug designs here, okay? Uh, pretty much what we could say with our coil over plug designs is, well, we can throw a coil over plug example in here. I, I would definitely not call them bypass ignition systems. They, are, but they most certainly are not. There are some variations with the coil over plug designs and where the igniter lives, you know, where the transistor lives that controls the coil, there are some variations there. The reason this one's my favorite is some of the checks that I'm going to have you do when we have no spark diagnosis is to take the scan tool in a bi-directional mode and command the coil to fire. Guess what vehicle you can do this on? Chrysler. Now the newer coil lever plug designs, you might be able to do that. I'm not 100% sure, but I've been able to do this, man, all the way back to 1984. The 1984 Dodge Omni, I've been able to bi-directionally fire that coil with the scan tool. Now I think about this. This car comes in, has no spark, okay? And you can take the scan tool and fire the coil and you now have spark. Does that give you some really good direction? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what would be good? In, that, in this scenario, what would be good if the car came in, didn't have spark, you connected the scan tool, fired the coil, it does have spark now, what's good? Computer, Computer is good. Coil, coil. coil is good. Yeah. Wiring in between is good, yeah. right? What direction? Where are we going? We have an input problem. Crank sensor, no question about it. We have an input problem on this car. How fast was that? Extremely fast. Do you guys understand why Chrysler has, over the years, been my favorite vehicle to troubleshoot? Because Chrysler has always given me these types of bi-directional controls where the other manufacturers were not. In 84, Ford wouldn't even give you data stream, let alone give you a bi-directional control, although they did have their key on engine off self-test, which was cool, but it would do everything. It wouldn't let me pick one thing to do. What am I missing? Some coil over plug designs? I guess we could do that now. It really ties into to what we're doing, no spark diagnosis direction. And by the way, this example here, this is waste spark systems. We can, we can plug this information in waste spark and distributor. So all of these, to be clear here, I would say waste spark and distributor, coil lever plug is gonna change things. Our newer systems, let's, let's do that before we do our coil lever plug. Our newer Ford, newer GM, pretty sure Chrysler is still doing the same thing. Um, I'm fairly certain that the even the coil over plug designs that Chrysler is using still the same way. We just have multiple coils. So I guess we could add that. You know, if this was if this was a coil over plug, we just have another coil, and we have another coil. You guys follow that? It's really the same thing. I can take those coils, fire them with the scan tool that would be two wire coils. You know what? I'm going somewhere I didn't want to go yet. Let's do the, let's do the newer GM and newer Fords. Well, at least I know GM is like this. 
I can't think of the Ford offhand, but here's the newer GM. ICM, by the way, is ignition control module. Do you see what changed? Here's the old design GM up here, very top. Crank signal goes to the ICM. ICM takes the signal, converts it, send it sends it to the PCM. PCM sends an altered signal back on the EST wire. Here's, here's, the, here's the new design. What's that look like to you? Just substitute the ICM for what? Igniter and we, we now have an Asian and Euro design, don't we? It's not a bypass system anymore. This newer GM with this design ignition system if we had a fried module, would we have spark? If we had a fried PCM, would we have spark on this design? We won't. So look, listen, do you guys understand the reason that I went over this with you is, is mainly to cover the PCM and five volt reference circuit short that I'm saying is a possibility on that front page and that not all cars react the same way. On some cars we'll have spark, on, here's, here's what we can say. On all the cars, we got no communication. No, we can't even say that anymore, damn it. That 2006 Cadillac changed that thought process now. If there's one 5-volt regulator in the computer system, we have no communication, no check engine light, no injection pulse, and here's the final comment, possibly no spark. Do you understand the variable now between the possibly no spark statement? The variable is... Is it a bypass system or not? If it is, we have spark. If it's not, no spark. Okay, might as well do it. It's not difficult, so COP designs, coilover plug designs. And this will be a little bit different from what we're doing here, but because I don't know where all of the systems, the modules and things like that are set up, I believe most of them are computer controlled, so uh, we gonna do the new Ford first. Oh, you you talking about for this? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I should title this. This would be a newer. Let's just say this newer GM and Ford. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's the same way, although I can't tell you with 100% certainty. I, I'm fairly confident that Ford stopped using the bypass ignition system. No, they definitely did because on a lot of these systems. Even the waste sparks, there's no ignition module anymore either. It's part. It's kind of like Chrysler that the ignition module's inside of the computer, mm -hmm. and they've been using coilover plug for a long time now. AJ, what year is your Taurus? Do you have coil? Or, is it coilover no, plug? It's, it's not. It's spark plug. Before. It's a waste spark system. So I'm not sure what year. Maybe two, early 2000. They went coilover plug, and I believe on those COP systems, there's no ignition module. So let's start with that one. Let's. Let's do the two wire. Let's do the two wire design COP. So coil over plug. The two wire COP. What we have would be I'm just going to draw the the coil, the primary side of the ignition coil. I don't care about the secondary right now. We have a feed going to the coil and we have a control, and this control, I am almost positive that most of them, no, I am positive that most of them, I don't want to say all of them use the PCM, because there can be some that may have an ignition module that's controlling them, I just can't think of one offhand, so we'll call it computer control. Here's your circuit. Where is the transistor that controls the coil? Transistor is inside of our engine computer. So our engine computer is handling some pretty heavy current flow, wouldn't you agree, on an ignition coil primary circuit? You know, most of these coils, you're talking on average six to 10 amps of current flow that a primary circuit is going to draw. This should not be foreign to you guys. We, we've done stuff like this in section three. Section three, we did output controls and drivers, and this is not foreign material. This is a ground side switch circuit. This is what they're doing with it. Right now, I don't want to get into all the testing. I just want to show you the difference between the coils, OK? 
Okay. This would be a two wire coil over plug design. Let's call this a typical design. I don't want to put a manufacturer name to this. Let's just say typical two wire coil over plug design. A three wire, let's do a three wire design, will look like this. We have a positive, by the way, this is my coil here in this two wire design. So we have a positive source. And this time I'll draw the coil as a box. We'll put the primary winding in here and we will put, uh, let me change this box a little bit. There's my primary winding and inside of the, inside of the coil is a transistor. And that goes to ground and this goes to my PCM pretty big difference in design. Where is the transistor that controls the coil? It is in the coil itself. So is this computer, I said up here, that we're talking high current, right? This six to 10 amps here, that's pretty heavy current flow on that circuit. This is a pretty heavy duty driver right there inside the computer, don't you think? Construction wise, that's a pretty heavy duty driver. How about this design? On this design, the transistor is inside of the coil. And so our high current is actually gonna go this way to ground, right? As it's switched, well to be technical here, it actually goes like this, through the winding, through the transistor, on its way to ground. That would be my high current circuit. In this term, we experimented with one of these coils and we actually figured out what our, our milliamp draw was on the base circuit. Do you remember a number of 26 milliamps? Is it about 26 milliamps? So this one up here, we're talking six to 10 amps of current flowing this way. And on, th on this design, we have there's a driver in here, it would be a transistor, that is going to switch this transistor on. But this is only about 26 milliamps of current. So how small is this driver compared to this driver? I mean, if we did a size difference, we can kind of blow it up. Let's say this one's like, this one's like that big, and in comparison, this one's about that big. So there's the size of the transistor for this one. There's the size of the transistor for this one. Those aren't actual sizes. I'm just emphasizing the difference here. This is one of those little circuit board mounted transistors that they actually, when you look at them, I believe they look like this. They, they have a, a little square piece and then there'll be a pad here, a pad here, and a pad there. When you look at it straight on the board, and there's no heat sink at all. It's mounted directly to the board where these ones up here, they actually have legs that you can see and they're, they're soldered to the board and they would be mounted on a metal strip that would run across. That would be your heat sink. And they'll put cooling fins on it. Not that that's helping us in any way, shape or form troubleshoot the car, but <laughs> sorry. I'm just emphasizing how much lower current that this computer, this three wire design has. All right, what about a four wire design? Four wire design is essentially the same as the three wire, but the four wire design just has a feedback circuit. So let's pretty much draw the same thing. Primary winding, transistor, has a ground external, still have our same computer control. The fourth wire, I'm not sure I can draw here, but I will say that it is tied somehow into the coil negative. So what we will have is another wire coming out. And we'll, we'll use uh, Toyota's design. You work for Toyota? We'll use Toyota's terminology here. This would be called the IGF circuit and this would be called the IGT circuit. 
and IGT is ignition timing, and IGF is, well, I've heard some different names there, but ignition confirmation, whatever you want to call those signals, uh, I think that's pretty close. IGF is ignition confirmation. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So before I explain this four wire in detail, do you guys see that essentially it's the same as the three wire? Where's the transistor? It's in the coil. If you're dealing with a two wire coil over plug design, where's the transistor? It's in the PCM. So this changes direction, don't you think? This changes our approach. It helps to know that. The three wire and four wire, essentially we treat these the same. The two wire coil negative is here. Agreed? Coil negative is this entire circuit right, right here. Coil positive, obviously, we don't really need to, to name that, but this side's coil positive. Down here, on the three pin, where's coil negative? Here's coil positive. Coil negative is right there, and it only goes that far. Now you could make the argument that, that this is also coil negative, and I would agree with you, but the problem is that is a ground all the time, okay? Up here, is this, is this wire a ground all the time? Or is it a pulsed ground? It's a pulsed ground. What's my point? My point is, when we're doing waveforms on these, as we continue through this chapter, we're going to start doing coil primary voltage waveforms. We're going to do coil primary current waveforms. Does it matter where coil negative is? It does because you cannot view a voltage waveform on a three or four wire coil over plug design. Because same way, here's your, here's your coil negative on the four pin design too, coil negative. The side that's pulsing on and off is only right there. Granted current flow travels here and we will be able to see primary current. Think of our Nissan that we did. Were we able to see primary current patterns on the negative or on the ground wire? The answer is yes, but we were not able to see the voltage pattern. Questions? This is all really introduction to what? No spark diagnosis. Do you think you need to know this stuff? Do we need to know where the transistors live? Do we need to know what's controlling them? And then do we need to know our limitations on what we can see and what we cannot see? And the answer is yes to all of that. This IGF wire, let's talk about this real quick. We said ignition confirmation. So the computer's controlling, agree with me, the computer's controlling the base circuit of that transistor as it is up here in this circuit. We are controlling the base circuit of this transistor right here. We're turning that on, turning that off making and breaking the circuit. That's what's charging and discharging my primary winding, is that transistor. We're doing the same thing down here on the IGT circuit. We're controlling the base of the transistor, which is charging and discharging this coil. Coil negative is where we get this large magnetic field collapse. If you look at the two pin design up here, what we would see with a normal turn on, turn off. Let's see if you guys remember this. We've done this. Section three, if this driver here is off, what is my voltage in this circuit? I know we have a resistor here, but we're not going to have a voltage drop unless we have current flow. So if this driver is off here, we have no current flow, and what we'll have on this line is battery voltage. And it will be, if the engine's running, it will be a flat line 14 volts. When the transistor over here turns on, what we will have, I'm just going to draw the picture. I'm using this kind of disappearing ink, so I don't have like ink everywhere. 
Here's what the pattern looks like. That's your primary event. Probably shouldn't have done that one and disappeared. Eh? Let me let that go away and we'll do that in regular. Here's what it looks like. Here's the primary pattern. Essentially looks like that. Now there might be some shifts in this section here, depends on the design. We'll talk more about that later because we need to know about that for weak spark situations. I have a case study coming up where I've identified a bad ignition module by that little dotted line down there. So hang with me here. All of this stuff is, is critical. Why does the pattern look like this? Circuit is off. As soon as this driver closes to ground, we switch to very, very near ground voltage. And then the, the period of time that current is flowing here, we will, flow, we will keep this line down near zero. When the trans, oh, and by the way, aren't we charging this with a magnet during this event? And when we let go of this transistor, when this opens, we get this large field collapse, so we get this big spike and then the remainder of this has to do with the secondary winding and feedback. Okay? Very, very similar to an injector pattern, really, other than that oscillation at the end. Do you guys understand that we can see this event in this entire wire? Anywhere that I tap into that circuit, I can see that coil. This is called a coil negative voltage waveform. This is our voltage waveform for coil negative. Down here, I can only see that pattern right there. So guess what cannot be viewed on three and four wire coil ever plug engines? You cannot view coil negative voltage waveforms. Why? because it's inside of the coil. Can I view a turn on signal here? Of course, it's a low voltage, generally zero to four volt signal. That's not coil negative voltage. Can I look at coil negative voltage here? Of course, but are you going to see those pressure changes on a ground wire? No, it's a ground, this is after the effect. Can I see primary current can I see coil negative current flow? The answer is yes, but you wouldn't call it coil negative current flow because the current flow through the positive is the same as the negative. So can I view coil primary current flow? Yes. The answer is yes. Let's, let's go up here to the two pin. Can I view current flow on the primary on the feed wire with an amp probe? Yes. I certainly can. Can I view that same thing on the negative wire current flow? Absolutely. Come down here to this one. Same thing. Can I view coil primary current right there? Yes. Can I also view it right here? Yes. What about this wire? No, because that's not primary current at all. What is that? That's Signal. base circuit control, yeah. right? What would be the comparison here? If I were to monitor this circuit, that would be like you coming in here and digging the transistor out of the computer, right? And then monitoring this base circuit here. Does that make sense? Because that's what you would be looking at. On and off. Yes, on off, trigger signal, low, low amperage. Um, so this is not coil negative. That's base circuit control. Same thing with this IGT, base circuit control. All right, so let's focus on the IGF and then we'll move away from this and we'll get back to the text. The IG F signal, do you understand that the IGF signal is being generated by coil negative circuit field collapses? If you read the theory on this, our IGF circuit is triggered by the primary magnetic field. Okay? And what I've always said in the past is when the field collapses, we get this large voltage spike. And it's not a direct connection like I'm showing in this picture. Let's, let's do this. I know I have this drawn as a, a, uh, a direct connection here on this primary. So I'm looking right here. It's not really directly connected. There's some circuitry involved that produces a 
conditioned signal. And I say that because I've looked at IGF circuits and they're pretty much square waves. Now you might see them as maybe kind of a sawtooth kind of pattern, uh, but it is definitely a conditioned signal. In other words, it's, it's generated from, guys listen, it is definitely generated from the magnetic field of the primary winding, but how it does it, I can't tell you. I'm not an electronic engineer, okay? What I've always said in the past on these IGF circuits is when the field collapses, big spike, that's what triggers the IGF. Computer wants to see, the computer wants to see that IGF signal the same time or as it's sending the IGT signal out, it's watching the IGF signal return to say what? Okay, I commanded you to fire, did you fire? Does that make sense? That's our IGF circuit, it's a monitored circuit. Now what I found is that isn't always the case. I have a video where I talked about this and what I found is the IGF circuit was actually being turned on not when the field collapsed but when the field started and so there's variations in there. Okay, um, I'm not really concerned about the timing of the IGF in this example in this conversation. I'm just sharing with you what the fourth wire is on a four wire coilover plug design and here's what we can say for sure it is a monitored circuit some of our older toyotas igf circuit was used for injection timing no igf signal on an old distributor design toyota no injection pulse so it was basically kind of your I guess your cam signal you could call it. Kind of crazy design. No IGF signal, no injection pulse. I've read that before. So again for us, IGF, what is it? It is confirmation. IGT, what is it? That is our timing signal. You guys feel a little overwhelmed or is everybody following me here? It's all perspective. I haven't really said anything here that was crazy new information. You know, we've been talking about all of these drivers and controls and power and ground side switching and magnetic fields a whole term. This isn't anything different. It's just where we're putting it. Would you say any of these designs that I've mentioned to you guys would be bypass type systems? Would you say that any of these coil over plug designs I've drawn here are bypass systems. What's controlling, so the three wire one was your question. The three wire one we're looking at, the computer controls the coil all the time. Four wire one, same thing. Computer controls the coil all the time. Our two wire one up here, computer controls the coil all the time. Now we could make the argument that there is possible, some of these designs have this driver located in a module. It is possible, but I don't remember seeing it. No bypass systems here, guys. These are all re regular, straight up computer controls and coils all the time. Chrysler did them. We don't have to talk about the system designs much here, but the nice thing about the Chryslers for, for the top picture, Chrysler did it that way, is I could still fire the coils individually. I like that. I have some case studies coming up where we'll be doing some, some stuff here. So I think, guys, last thing here, and then we'll break and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll go to shop. But I think what I'm really preparing you for here is signal interpretation. Does that make sense? If we're going to look at coil waveforms, we want to know if we have control in light of no spark situations. Isn't knowing circuit design critical? And then when we plug in these signals, we'll be able to roll right through this. Okay? So let me give you one more before we break, just as in that thought process, as far as the signal goes, this one's very easy, as long as you understand how a coil works. When a coil produces spark, this is stuff you need to know for ASE test too, guys. Um, let's talk about some terms jumping here a little bit, but um, let me back up a couple steps to do this one signal I want to share with you. What is ignition dwell time? You need to know this for ASE tests. Ignition dwell means what? To 
put it simply, ignition on time. Ignition on time. I like that. Ignition on time works for me, but to be a little bit more specific in your mind about what is being turned on, it would be the primary winding has current flow. Ignition dwell is simply on time of the primary winding. And, and so do you guys understand that every vehicle is different and every coil is different and that our dwell time is going to change and that's determined by the coil itself and how fast it builds to saturation, which is magnetic field strength, the battery voltage that the car has, the system design, okay, just to name a few, our dwell time. Every car is different. I, I really don't measure ignition dwell time very often because it's set and the manufacturer has all those variables and I don't know them all. So, But important to know, dwell time. What is ignition timing? What is the difference between dwell time and ignition timing? Ignition timing would be what you guys are all thinking spark and that would be correct but to be more specific our ignition timing occurs the moment our dwell time stops. So when do we spark this coil? If we don't spark the coil when we turn it on. We spark the coil when we turn it off because we need the field to collapse. Okay. So we have primary flow. So we have we have current flowing through the winding on its way to ground. That would be our dwell time, the amount of time that current flows. And then the moment we shut that thing off is when we produce that spark from that ignition coil. All right, so let's plug that in now to this final piece, coil over plug. If you're doing tests on these systems, if I were to draw for you a base circuit turn on signal, so we'll focus down here on this four wire, and we're, we're, we're dealing with the base circuit of that transistor. If I were to draw for you the pattern, and it being a square wave, would you be able to tell me where the spark occurs in that square wave? Is the base circuit turn on signal of the transistor? If you're thinking, you can. We can tell exactly where spark occurs by looking at this uh, yeah, square wave. When it drops. Very good. Very good. A couple of you guys were saying that. Would you agree with me that the rising edge of this pulse here is what's going to turn the base of this transistor on down here? And that the falling edge, the turn off of that square wave is what turns this transistor off? So when the transistor turns off, isn't that the end of our primary circuit? I'm sorry, isn't that the end of our primary current flow through the circuit? So where does spark occur? Right there. If you guys want to watch a cool video, watch my Suzuki, is it an Aereo? It was a jump timing chain. And what I did with that is I did an in-cylinder pressure transducer waveform and I synced it with the coil primary pattern and what I saw was something like this. And what I, what I said by that pattern is my timing chain was off and I, I knew that because the tail end of that was where my spark was occurring which is nowhere near top dead center compression mm -hmm. so are you with me on now knowing these signals and how they occur and why they occur and their relationship to each other once you know that how much more knowledge do you have and to attack that car and know exactly where you're going so that would be the point with with that turn on signal, the base circuit turn on signal. Remember that, we use that for a lot more stuff. We can use that signal to synchronize other patterns. In fact, we just did that with the Nissan that was in here. Synchronizing coils, remember that one coil pattern that was very high and we didn't like it? We said, hey, that's the number three. How did we figure that out? Because we used that base turn on signal from the other coils. So we've been doing this stuff already. And probe. And probe. We had all the coils we were looking at, right? If you think what I'm saying here, and some of you guys are shaking your head, you remember, but th those of you that are watching this later, I'm gonna have a clue what I'm talking about. Last statement, I promise. Okay, we have six different coils, six different transistors, right? Three pin design, 
Would you agree with me that the computer is going to have a base circuit for all of these? And that the computer knows exactly which one, which one is which. This is inside of the PCM. All of these are going to share a power feed typically. So all of them will share the same feed. This would be going into the coil itself. I'm not drawing the primary winding. In fact, I should probably do that. The primary winding is here. Transistors on the ground side. And then all of these coils are also going to share what? All of them share a ground. So what we can do with this same signal we're talking about is we can either put an amp probe here or put an amp probe here. And what we'll see is all six coils firing on the screen. So we see six ramps and then they'll repeat themselves. If we see one out of sorts, one that we don't like, one that's different than the others. So you see that one there, we're repeating it here. Question is, which one is that? We don't like that pattern. We wanna know which one it is, it's real easy. Pull in a second channel. Connect to any one of these, if this is one, two, three, four, five, six, say if number, let's say number three is easy to get to, you just T-pin this wire, back probe it, and get a voltage pattern here, and then what we'll do is synchronize these two, amperage and voltage, and then say we have a pattern here and here, and we say this is my number three, does that make sense? that the turn on of that square wave matches the current rise of that coil exactly in time. And then the turn off too, so look at this, the turn on and turn off is exactly time. This is my number three, this is my number three. Plug in your firing order and you can figure out which coil is giving you an issue. How important is that if the intake manifold covers the coils and you can't get to them? This is what you're going to do. So do you need to know about these turn on, turn off signals and what they're all about, what they're used for? When we come back from break, we'll go back to page three. Well, we've been talking for like an hour and we're on page three. Um, sorry, a lot, of, a lot of background stuff that I think was very important. We'll go back to our direction page and we'll start plugging in all of these kind of tests.